This is Fountain Pendulum. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Kakamori nibs. And the one I have specifically to um, look up uh, close and in detail today is the stainless steel. So these have been out for a while, and it took me uh, a while to finally get one. And uh, there's multiple reasons for that. Um, it did take a while for me to decide, did I want the brass, did I want the stainless steel? And I kept flipping and flopping back and forth. So we're going to be talking about the difference uh, quite a bit today. And also, uh, I did decide to get the stainless steel. So we're going to be going over the unique qualities of that one versus the brass. And a realistic view, in my experience, in how these nibs work. Because that's another reason that I had a reserve is is it going to fulfill the needs or the wants that I have for this nib? Or is it just going to be um, something that I just don't end up using very much uh, for ink swatching and for writing in general, too? So first of all, um, you know, this is the packaging it comes in and it's going to have a check on brass or stainless steel. And then I'm going to pop this out and hear a, like a suction pop. Um, it's a little bit different than... Um, I didn't have anything super specific expected, but it's a little bit different than what I was thinking in that um, it feels like this end forward is solid. And then this end fall, uh, forward is hollow, of course, so that you can actually uh, put it in, insert it into your nib holder. So this is stainless steel and it has these uh, rivets, these cutouts, all the way down to the point of the nib and this is how ink is held so there's eight cutouts all along this nib and these effectively function as the ink reservoirs so that you can continue to write so um, a tip when you first receive yours is giving it a wash down with some mild soap just to remove any oil slicks. It does actually say when you uh, receive this nib, if I can just revisit this package here. I found this helpful. A lot of us kind of skip over this, but um, The nib has a protective coating and may recover, require several uses to reach optimal ink flow. And then, uh, you know, of course, there's other details, but that's the one I wanted to cover specifically because I, um, when I first got the nib out and started to use it, it wasn't uh, performing as I expected. So I think it's helpful to for them to have said, okay, don't expect that the optimal use will be immediate. Um, so I think that's very helpful information. So when I got it, um, I was experiencing that. I washed it with some mild soap just in case there's any oil. Now, another thing that uh, my advice is, is don't handle the nib. You have oil on your hands, even if they're well washed. So well, I'll wash your hands, wash the nib, and then from there on, I use a paper towel to handle the end piece so that there's no risk of oil disturbing the flow of the ink. Um, next is the nib holder that you use. I would strongly recommend these that have these plastic um, inserts. They're very superior to the old style, which are either just a plastic cut out or um, the metal ones. So for instance, here's a speedball um, nib holder. And uh, these are very familiar. And it just has a cutout like that. And this will not work well. It, um, it goes in and it will just fall out. So it's too loose, basically. So um, that's not going to work very comfortably for you. I'm not going to say it won't work at all, but I don't think that's an ideal fit. 
So, um, and likewise, I've heard that the, I don't have one to show, but um, I've heard that the metal inserts aren't ideal either. So you're going to want to check out the um, nib holder options that feature this um, sort of more advanced insert on them. It's just plastic. It's not, at least this one is not rubber. It's just plastic. So the Kakamori nib holder features this and then also this brand, uh, Tachi Kawa. So I'm going to show you where I got this uh, later in the video too, but I would actually strongly recommend this. I like that it's a little bit more compact than the Kakamori nib holder, although I haven't um, gotten or tried that myself, so it'd be interesting to compare. But this is what I got straight away. And when you insert this, you can feel that there's kind of a little bit of a snug resistance. And then when you take it out, it like pops. So I think that these work really well for that. So let me continue before I get it. I'll get it into all the details of where I got this and all that later. But for now, let me show you. Um, the, again, this is after a little bit of use, but this is a realistic expectation of the Kakamori nib. So ink, this is Ferris Wheel Press Candy Marcella. So I dipped the nib in. I let a drop fall off that was excess. And then I wrote straight away. And what you can see happened was in my first line, there's an enormous ink dump. Very broad, um, barely legible. And this is, you know, fairly large writing. And then as I continue, now this, you know, this is kind of like the ink dump territory. And then this begins to be very broad and very wet. And then I, in my opinion, it's not till several lines in, like to here, where we reach a more normal ink flow and writing. And then as we continue down the page, the writing gets finer and fainter until it finally runs out of ink. So from one full dip, when I say full, I mean that all the way to the top of those um, cutouts, I guess, right there, all the way to the top. So that is, in my experience, the reality of how this nib performs. So I would say if you're entertaining the idea of using this nib for writing, that's what you're going to experience. Have I reached the optimal point of this nib being broken in? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I've had it uh, a couple weeks and I haven't been using it super regularly. So it would be interesting to do a follow-up video, but at least I prepped the nib to get it prepared for success. That's what I got. So then um, the next thing I tried was since the first word is such, uh, or first line is such an ink dump, what if I do an ink dump? Because I'm going to be primarily using this nib for ink swatching, um, especially given its performance, not for writing. So what I did was the same thing. I dipped it in all the way in, dropped off one ink uh, drop, and then I did some swatching to kind of ink dump all the excess out. And now this is my first written line. So that kind of caught me up to, you know, somewhere a couple lines in where it's more the ink flow is more controlled and stable and then I continued to write again it progressively gets thinner and fainter and less generous in ink until it finally faintly writes and then runs out so that's how much uh, writing I was able to accomplish from one full dip from this nib and this is uh, the Kakuno six millimeter paper, just for reference. So this will vary again, of course, based off numerous things like your ink, but I think that's a good introduction on the reality of what to expect from this nib. And I'll be swatching and showing you how it writes um, also on camera, but I wanna show a few more details about this nib before I do that. 
So first of all, I found the Gourmet Pens Shop to be a wonderful resource in researching these Kakamori brass and stainless steel nibs. So here you'll see there's this metal nib guide. And it is in a parallel manner comparing the stainless steel to the brass. So on the left you'll see the stainless steel and it says it's ideal for fine lines and letters. It has a sharp writing feel and a durable uh, rust resistant finish. And then the photo below you'll see a fine line and then the broad line which you can accomplish by holding the nib at a tilt. And then some squiggly lines and some sharp um, up and down kind of M-shaped lines. And then to the right, the brass nib, it says it's ideal for creating undulating lines. Soft writing feel develops a natural patina over time. And then you'll see the line is more broad um, initially there. And about the same when you hold it at a tilt, the squiggly lines are broader also. And then for some reason, well, I guess instead of doing the sharp, it they're showing what they're um, especially good at. So the stainless steel more agile for those sharp turns and then the brass is better for softer um, curvatures and things like that. Um, also we want to check out when comparing the various nibs that Kakamori makes. Check out this video by Leanne Likes. She goes over four of the different nibs that Kakamori has made um, in her video. And it's fantastic because you can really, uh, she lays it out in such a clear, organized manner. So, and she does these beautiful illustrations to show you what they are like and how they feel and the different um, effects that they make also. So myself personally, having written with both the stainless steel and the brass, I'd say the brass is great for more free expression. So going back to this diagram so you can see, um, the brass is, in my opinion, great for more free expression and uh, kind of an artistic flair, larger writing applications for a soft, medium, or broad nib would be more applicable, whereas the steel is a more precise point likened more to a fine. Um, it's still smooth and a pleasant nib, but it's made of steel, a harder material, so you'll feel the difference. To me, the steel is more ideal of a fit for my purposes, which would be ink swatching and the finer writing needs while ink swatching. Um, so, you know, I do my ink swatch maybe do a little ink puddle, and then I'd want to be able to write the brand name and the ink name on the swatch in a compact area. So for that to be legible to my preferences, the stainless steel is more ideal, which is why I decided to go with that one. Now let's talk about the nib holder that I would recommend. The Kakamori nib holder is great, but I was just looking for something a little bit different and it just worked better for me. So these are the Tachikawa nib holders and I got mine at Jet Pens. They may be available elsewhere, but this is where I picked mine up and they're very beautiful. I like that they're a little bit more compact, so they're not as long, so it just uh, I like long ones too, I just find that this is very practical. So these are wood, and as you'll see, some of them are actually resin as well, but some of them have these um, kind of squishy grip sections. That's not my preference. I was between the metallic red and then this lighter color, which I ended up getting. I see that they have a pink one available now too, but yeah, this is what I ended up getting. and. I love it. And it's a very well made, very economical choice. And I would strongly, strongly recommend it. And 
some people have voice concerns about using wood holders. This is beautifully polished and sealed and I don't have any issue with getting it wet or getting ink on it or being able to clean it up. Um, you certainly shouldn't be leaving it in a cup of water because that would break down any kind of seal over time. But if you're caring for it well, wiping it down right away, um, there's, there's no issue. It's very smooth and well finished to the touch. Now, the final push that helped me get over this teeter-totter of, you know, should I get the Kakamori nib or not? Um, it was deciding, you know, did I, what, what's my best fit, the stainless steel or the brass? And the various resources I shared with you helped me get to that decision. But this is, this was the final push. Endless pens, I, I came across on Instagram and they were sharing their price point for these nibs. And that's what sealed it off for me. That's what kind of was like, okay, I'm going to get one now. And they have the stainless steel and the brass available. And I got it and I'm glad I did. And I had a very um, excellent experience with them. And I, I see now that they also have this chart available, which is awesome. It's so important that people distinguish that there's indeed a difference between the stainless steel and brass because I've had retailers say, oh, there's no difference. It's just a different material. And I believe this chart was provided by Kakamori, but it's so great. I first stumbled across it with the gourmet pens, but I think it's fantastic that Endless Pens has this too. That to me is they're doing service to this product and letting you know that there is a difference. And here's a little chart that helps you identify what the best fit for you would be. So let's get into our writing sample. All right, so I'm gonna have a bit of fun with you guys with the writing samples, because I'm going to swatch. Uh, I just received this Ferris wheel press ink charger set. If you guys haven't checked these out, they're absolutely phenomenal. I love them. It comes with three glass vials that are five milliliters each. And then on the back, it'll say what has been included with it. So this one has the steeped umber, oyster hour, and spruce county post. And when I saw this combination, I absolutely had to grab it because I've been wanting to try um, the spruce county post and the oyster hour especially, but then I saw the color of the steeped umber and I was like, oh, done. So these are beautifully packaged. The uh, packaging has a beautiful, luxurious texture to it. You just pop this open and I love all their packaging, it's gorgeous. And then I just kind of pull this up a little bit and I can flip those out and they're really adorable. Um, metal caps, glass vials, it's labeled on the bottom um, as to which one is which so you won't get them confused and color coordinated. And then it says, um, please use creatively made in Canada and it has the little charger symbols on it. So like ink charger, very, very nice. So we're going to be doing this, um, these sets just so you guys get an idea of what it's going to be like to swatch with the um, Kakamori nib. And then here I have my Kakuno blank paper. So this has been cleaned. I'm just going to give it a little wipe down. And then I'm going to dip this in all the way to get like a full fill. And I found it helpful just to wipe off the excess on the sides very gently. And then again, as I mentioned, the first thing I like to do with this nib is do an ink dump. So release all that excess that's left on the end. You'll kind of see with um depending on how how deep you dip it will depend on how full those channels get so here's something that i've learned that i kind of want to pass on so when you're going to do your ink swatching for instance and you're going to do a broad line you want to hold this nib very low so that the belly of it 
is what's going to lay down a large amount of ink. And you want to kind of uh, keep rotating this. Um, you don't have to be crazy about it, but keep rotating it so the different ink channels distribute ink and not just a few of them. And have a very light hand. Again, this is steel. It's well uh, polished and everything. But if you put pressure, you're going to rough up your paper. So here we go. It really takes no pressure at all. That's how you know it's a well-made nib. And if I do put pressure, like if I, do you see all those, look at all those scratches and like how it roughed up the paper. So just do it very gently. It doesn't take um, any pressure at all. And likewise with the writing, it doesn't take pressure. Now, um, there I wrote it at my normal writing angle. If I hold it more upright, I'm going to get a finer line. So like so. And I'll show you too. So very vertical. Then I'm going to start moving a little bit more to an angle, gets thicker, gets thicker, gets thicker. And you can do something like this also. See, isn't that fun? Love it. So um, then I'm just going to switch this around in some water and we can move on to the next color. All right, here is our next color. This is the Oyster Hour. Just kind of showing that you can do your ink swatches and whatever fits your fancy. So this is the Oyster Hour. And you can see the progression on how you angle your nib to get um, the line thickness that you're going for. It's a big contrast. Starting to run out of ink a little bit on that side anyway. So that's what I mean by sometimes you have to rotate it because you'll go to lie down a, um, an ink line and that area might be out of ink. So you just kind of rotate it a little bit. These Kakamori nibs have a lot going for them, I have to say. So I like that you can get, it, get different line widths, but I like that you can do everything at once. More traditionally, I've been using a watercolor brush to do um, my swatches, or I'll use um, a stone and an eyedropper. But I like the minimalistic approach that if I choose to, I can just use one instrument, one instrument to use for all of it, one instrument to clean. And the ease of cleaning is so good. So
you can do, you know, any of these styles that work well for you when you're doing your ink swatching, whatever that may be. And the versatility it offers is fantastic. I find that I, when I'm doing my ink swatching, it can be a little bit of a, a setup and a process to, you know, get everything cleaned. So being able to do all that in one go, in the sense of all I have to do is swish my nib around. And by the way, I'll share this detail too. I usually just put enough water in my bowl to be able to submerge the nib. That way I'm not unnecessarily getting the rest of my nib holder wet when I don't need to. So just putting in an, ink of, an inch of water or so, so that the nib can be thoroughly washed. And then as I mentioned before, um, then I'll dry it off immediately, just like that. And the wood is very polished and smooth. It's um, protected from being porous at this point. So as long as you dip it and wash it off and just wipe it clean right away, and it's up to you if you're gonna store it. Um, you know, if water gets in there, you could just dab it off like this. But yeah, it's up to you. Um, you know, I think if you disassemble and just wipe it off, it, that's probably more um, thorough because I can see a little ink come out, but to each their own. But that's it's so easy to use and to clean. So I think this is a ink swatcher's best friend, honestly. Now, again, when it comes to the actual writing, um, like the writing pages that I was showing you guys earlier, um, I don't feel the need to redo these on video. I think that they speak well for themselves. But um, I wouldn't really pick up this nib for just a writing instrument. It can be used if needed, as you can see, but I wouldn't find it an ideal instrument for writing because there's so much variation in how much ink is being used. And I would say if you want to write with it, so like when I do the full dip, I can just ink dump with these swatches and it's perfect because then by the time it comes to my writing portion, most of the ink uh, or a good deal of the ink anyway has been released. So I can now accomplish these fine lines that I want to do for writing the brand in the ink. And that's where you decide, do you want, this is basically to me like a fine. Do you want a fine line or do you want more of a medium or a broad? Because if you want more of a medium or a broad, to me, it sounds like the brass would be a better fit. So those are those are the things you kind of have to distinguish for yourself. Do you like a sharp, crisp, fine line or do you like something more broad? And um, but in, a, in an essence, they would both accomplish the same thing. So another thing I would say, too, is if you want to do writing with it and you're not going to do an ink dump with the swatch, I would say instead of submerging this this nib in all the way, just dip the point. So basically from here down, that way you don't get so much ink at once. It would require you to re-dip more frequently, but the idea is that you would be kind of skipping this very inky portion and jumping straight to this more moderate. And then when it is starting to run out, you would dip it again and continue in this fashion. That's that's my thought process. So um, if I just dip the point in and not all the way, and then just wipe off the excess on the rim gently, then 
this is the other thing I was thinking about. Is that when I do that, there may be still a small accumulation of ink at the point. So I kind of hold it upside down for a minute just to let that ink flow down back through the channels so that it's not all concentrated on the point there. And then let's see how this kind of goes. And again, I'm going to write as upright as possible to get a fine line. I think that worked very well. That's not excessively um, generous on the ink. So I would say that that is a success. And as you can see, when I lower my writing angle, it's a broader, more generous ink flow. So your writing angle has a lot to do with and that's more upright so just keep that in mind also and your pressure it doesn't take much pressure and the more pressure you put the more the nib will encounter the paper and the more ink will be dumped so yeah that's that's the overview um hopefully that is insightful as you consider your kakamori nib purchasing options. I'm thinking about maybe getting a brass also when they're back in stock at Endless Pens, but we'll see. I really don't feel the need to have both. If I had both, I would probably use them both, but I don't think I need them both. And these are all set. So I just recently got this set because I like doing my seasonal um, ink swatching um, or currently inked on the channel and I wanted uh, they're gorgeous colors but I wanted to get some autumn vibes going so I most likely will have all three of these on my currently inked for autumn um, I'm not sure how many more inks I'll add to this uh, collaboration I guess of inks but I mean these are absolutely beautiful for autumn um, I would have liked this to be a little bit, maybe a little bit greener, because um, it's a little bit too dark, maybe, but not bad, not bad at all. And I like that this collection also is sheen and shimmer free. So to me, these make them very fountain pen friendly inks that I can ink up um, in whatever I choose to without worrying about that. I think they make absolutely gorgeous shimmer inks and I've gotten them, but I do find them rather troublesome when it comes to performance. So I kind of have to be in the mood and have to have the right pen being inked to take that selection on. So yeah, that is the overview of this stainless steel Kakamori nib. I hope all of those insights were helpful and that um, it will either help you determine what you might want to get or help you better use what you've already gotten. And I hope the product selections and the other uh, video and website references were helpful also. So thank you for watching and it's all up to you now. Enjoy your dip nibs.